This is the video demonstration on the time value of money. In this video, I'm going to work the solution to example number five. And in this example, it simply says solve the following time value problems. And we have seven different situations that need to be resolved. Now, to solve these problems, we're going to have to utilize our time value tables. And most of the calculations that we're going to be doing are going to be fairly simple and fairly straightforward. Really the challenging thing is simply deciding which table is the appropriate table to use in which situation. If you can understand that, then these, these particular problems are going, to, are going to be much easier to solve. And also for good measure, we're going to have a few that are thrown in here that are going to be a little bit complex. They're going to have some items that are a little bit more difficult than what we talked about in our video lecture. So we'll be able to look for those and you'll be able to handle just about anything that could possibly be thrown at you in terms of time value problems. So we're going to take these one at a time. The very first problem, we have a company here that has an opportunity to invest $10,000 at 6%. How much will have accumulated in 10 years? Now in that case, think about what type of problem that is. They're going to just simply invest $10,000, a one-time investment. How much will they have accumulated in 10 years? So what they're wondering about there, the question part of it is, in the future, 10 years in the future, what are they going to have? So to solve this problem, I want to use the future value of one table. Now I'm going to start off with simply the $10,000. There's my $10,000. Now I'm going to multiply that by a number. I just don't necessarily know what the number is yet. I know I want to use the future value of one table and I know it's going to be what? 6% and 10 years. So all these tables these tables are available in the textbook. They're also available on our course website. And I have these in PDF format so that anybody can open them. But I've just opened the future value of one table. And what I want is 6% and 10 years. So when I go to the 6% column and I go down to the 10th line, the number that I see there is 1.7908. So 1.7908. So what I'll do is take that 10,000 and simply multiply that by that number. So that tells me that if I invest $10,000 at 6% interest, after 10 years I'll have $17,908. So that completes number one. So that was a pretty easy one actually. So number two, a company needs to have $1 million seven years from now for a building project in an investment opportunity that pays 8%. How much will have to be deposited today in order to reach their goal? So they want to deposit a one-time amount today so that in seven years at 8%, it'll be a million dollars. Well, this is a present value problem because we know how much they want to have in the future. We know that's going to be a million. What we don't know is how much it would take now in order to get there. So we're going to have to use, to solve this problem, present value of one, and it's going to be 8% and it's going to be seven years. So remember, the main thing is understanding what table to use. That's the most challenging thing. But this is the present value of one table. And in this case, I want 8%. So I've got to look until I find the 8% column. And I want the seventh number. So the number that I see there is 0 0.5835. 0 0.5835. And of course the amount is $1 million. So the $1 million times that number off the present value of one table, 583,500. So if they will go today 
and deposit 583500 at 8%. In seven years, they'll have a million dollars. The third problem. An individual plans to invest $2,000 at the end of each year at 5%. How much will have accumulated in 20 years? Now, this is a future value problem. Because think about it, they're going to invest 2000 each year. They want to know how much they're going to have in 20 years. So that's a future value. But what's different, this is future value of an annuity. What makes this different? Well, it doesn't simply say they're going to invest $2,000. It says they're going to invest $2,000 at the end of each year. So when you do that every single year, year after year, that makes it an annuity. So we're going to have to use future value of an annuity table. And this is going to be 5% 20 years. The amount in this case is 2000 I want future value of an annuity table. I want 5%. I want 20 periods. So in the 5% column, the 20th number is 33.0660. So we'll take the 2,000, we'll multiply it by that factor, $66,132. So if they will stay committed to that and make that annual deposit, end of every year of 2000, and they stick with that, they will have $66,132 in the future. Now, the next situation, this is situation number four. It says, how much money will have to be deposited today at 10% in order to make a withdrawal of $10,000 at the end of each year for the next five years. So think about that. How much money would have to be deposited now in the present at 10% in order to make a withdrawal of $10,000 at the end of each year for the next five years? So that is a present value, but it's present value of an annuity because the withdrawals are going to be at the end of every year for several years. So in this case, it's 10% and how many years? Five years. And we're going to have to use the amount here, which is 10,000. But we're going to use the present value of an annuity. So on the present value of annuity table, I want 10%. I want five years. So the number that I see there is 3.7908. So I'll just simply multiply these two. $37,908. So that's what it would be on the present value of that ordinary annuity. Now, situation number five. This company plans to invest $100,000 at the beginning of each year at 6%. How much will be accumulated at the end of eight years? So they're going to invest $100,000 each year, 6%. So the, the rate is 6%. The number of years is eight. They want to know in the future how much is going to be invested. Now what makes this one a little bit more difficult Notice that it says that you're going to invest the money at the beginning of each year. Now that's a little different. That's something we've never talked about before. Normally the deposits are made at the end of every year. But since this is the beginning, this makes this a special type of annuity. It's called an, annu an annuity due. So remember that anytime you see that, that the payments are going to be at the beginning of the year, that's different. That's an annuity due. So you, when you see me do the calculation, I'm going to do this in a slightly different way by adding an additional step. But the amount here is 100000 I've got to look up the factor. So for that, I need my table. And previously, I'd closed out my future value of an annuity factor. 
So I want future value of an annuity. I want this at 6%. I want this for eight years. The number that I see there is nine point. It is 9.8975. Now, normally, I would just multiply that. But remember, this is an annuity due. So I have to add on an additional step. What's the additional step? I'm going to use 1.06. Why do I have to do that? Anytime the payments are made at the beginning of the year that makes it an annuity due, the extra step is going to be 1 plus the interest rate. Well, the interest rate is 6%, so 1.06. So I'm going to multiply this by both the original factor and the 1.06. So it's going to be $1,049,135. So remember that. It's that extra step anytime it's at the beginning of the year. That made that one a little bit more complicated.